Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to process a RAW file in Affinity Photo. Now, as you can see, I have Affinity Photo open, and when you first open it, you'll be greeted by this information panel. And if you don't want to see this anymore, there's a little checkbox you could check to make sure that that doesn't show anymore when you start Affinity Photo. Now, I mentioned we're going to process a RAW file, so I'm just going to close that. And we're going to go up to the top and we're going to go up to file open and on my desktop i have a raw file it's right there and we're going to click open and when you open a raw file in affinity photo it's similar to photoshop it doesn't open up in the photo persona of affinity photo it opens up in the develop persona and the develop persona is akin to adobe camera raw in photoshop and you have many similar controls in, in the develop persona that you would have in Adobe Camera Raw. Over on the left hand side we have a number of tools and over on the right hand side we have all the controls and adjustments. The controls and adjustments are divided up into several tabs. Now typically what I would do is I would start out probably cropping the image. Um, I don't think this image needs to be cropped at all. Uh, this is a sculpture park near where I live. It's just a park with a lot of sculptures in it. And um, I think it's fine the way it is. I think it's straight. It's kind of hard to tell because the ground is sloping. So I don't think I need to do anything right away over here on the left as far as tools are concerned. So we're going to jump right in to the right hand side and start adjusting the image. Now, by default, it's going to have exposure and enhance uh, checked and open. You don't have to start there. You could jump all over. You could go from tab to tab. You could do whatever you like. I'm going to go to highlights in shadows or shadows and highlights as they have it worded here and I'm going to open up the shadows and I'm going to rein in the highlights a little bit then I'm going to go back up to the top and um, a lot of people ask what's the difference between exposure and brightness well exposure obviously if you move it to the right it's just going to make the image brighter and if you look at the histogram and you look at the right hand side of the histogram where the highlights are if I move the exposure slider to the right and I keep moving it to the right it starts moving stuff right off the right hand side so it really will blow out the highlights right similarly if I move it to the left it will start moving stuff off the left hand side so it's going to crush those shadows the difference between that and the brightness slider is the brightness slider will bring that histogram to the edge like build everything up over there but it doesn't uh, in this case moving it to the right blow out the highlights and similarly if I move it to the left it won't crush the shadows so uh, brightness sometimes I like to use better or use instead of exposure because in this case I could brighten up those midtones and I'm sure I'm not beginning to blow out the highlights in the clouds so that's why I prefer to use that now black point I could bring that up and I could just kind of like make the darkest parts of the image just a little more dark uh, with that and then we have uh, contrast clarity I'm not going to add any contrast to this image but I think we'll add some clarity and you can see that I've only moved uh, one two three four five sliders so far and really the image is almost done uh, because their um, their uh, develop persona is very powerful it does quite a bit uh, so uh, so far so good I'm not uh, going to do anything with saturation or vibrance you can see those are both at zero percent even though they're not right in the middle but they're not adjusted at all as you can see it was very colorful as it is so we'll go across the tabs on the right we'll go to lens and uh, lens corrections are checked uh, nothing I need to do manually um, remove chromatic aberration and when you do that it does examine the edges in the image and look for chromatic aberration and it will take some time uh, instead of working in the background which maybe they'll make that a feature in the future where it will do this in the background it kind of interrupts your workflow because you have to wait uh, for it to finish you can see it it finished there now remove any lens vignette I'm going to check that and you'll see that th it will brighten up along the edges when I check that a little bit you can see there's before after before after all right so there's lens correction we'll go to details and we're going to add some noise reduction I'm going to go over here in the left hand panel and get the magnifying glass and we'll zoom in zoom in 
And actually, I don't see too much noise, so we're just going to move some luminance noise reduction up very, very slightly. By default, it gives you 20% of color noise reduction, um, which I think is fine in this case. Um, kind of zoom in some more. Looks all right, I guess. All right, then we could go to Detail Enhancement, and we could add some sharpness. I'll go back to the Hand tool. Kind of look around something with a little more detail maybe in here. And I could bring the amount up a little bit and then move the radius to the right and see what it does. And right around there, it's making it nice and, nice and crisp. Now I want to fit this back to screen. On a Mac, hit Command-0. On a PC, you hit Control-0, and it will fit the image to screen. So I'm done with details, uh, tones. Um, I think sometimes I use, like, I'll do something with the tone curve, but I don't think that's really needed here. If you want to convert your image to black and white, you would do that right here, and you could adjust the black and white mix right there. Um, in this case, I want the color image. Uh, this was like a super, as you could see, I didn't adjust vibrance or saturation at all. And you can see how just dark blue the sky is and how the field is just so colorful. So I really don't, I really want it in color. I don't want to convert it to black and white. And I'm not going to do anything with split toning. And we're not going to add an overlay, overlays like a graduated filter or something like that. So I don't think that is needed here either. So I think we're in pretty good shape uh, just the way it is. I kind of like it. Um, what I can do, um, I think, if I go back to the Lens tab and I go to Post Crop Vignette, um, I could add a slight vignette uh, to the image. You can see if I move that to the right, it adds a bright vignette. But I move it to the left, I get a darker vignette. And I really don't like actually the way that's affecting the image. So to reset that slider, just double click right on the slider and I'll reset it. So um, we're not going to do that post crop vignette. I don't think that's needed. So we're done with the image actually. So what do we do from this point? Well, um, you may, those of you familiar with Photoshop, you know you could open it in Photoshop. There's a button on the right hand side, or you could click done uh, and you'd be done. In Affinity Photo, uh, similar to that open button, is the develop button. You just click on that and then it will open the image with your edits into Affinity Photo proper, the photo persona. And you could do things in the photo persona, like you could go to this adjustments tab and add adjustment layers if you wanted to. You could add other layers if you wanted to add text on this or if you wanted to put something else in the scene. Uh, maybe birds flying through the sky or something like that. You would do that in the photo persona. Now, I'm not going to do it to this image. I like this image the way it is. So actually, I consider this image to be done. Now, I want to stress that everything we've done to this image so far is non-destructive. Our RAW file is still sitting over here on my desktop. And if I open up that RAW file, uh, you'll see that it's unedited because Affinity Photo didn't touch the RAW file. It just read it and it's not writing to it. So you don't run the risk of ruining your original RAW file at all. Uh, so what do we do at this point if we want to save these edits? Well, we need to export it. So we're going to go up to File and we're going to go down to Export. And then the Export dialog box comes up. And you can see along the top, you have a lot of options to export it. PNG, JPEG, GIF, TIFF, and so on. You could even export it as a Photoshop file, a PSD file. Now, in this case, I just want to export it as a JPEG. And I want the long edge. Let's say I want to share this. Actually, I did share this exact image on um, Instagram. But let's say I want to share it on Instagram. Instagram recommends that the long edge be... 1080 pixels long so as soon as I type that in there because this little padlock is locked and I hit the tab key it'll automatically resize the short edge uh, as well so I'm keeping the 3 to 2 aspect ratio um, JPEG best quality high quality medium I'm gonna go with best quality of course that will be a bigger file but that's fine I'll resample I always just use bilinear you can see there's a lot of different uh, resample choices there I was always meaning to Google those to see what the difference is, but I've never have. So I'm just going to stay with bilinear quality at 100. 
um, we're going to do the whole document, all right? And um, you could do don't export layers hidden by the export persona. Um, in this case, this isn't applicable to this image. And we're going to click right here, export. Then it's going to ask us, where do we want to export it to? Well, we're going to export it to the desktop. And I'm not going to call it uh, underscore DSC 1122. I'm going to call it Sculpture Park. All right. And then we'll click Save. Okay, so we exported a JPEG, but that JPEG has all our settings, all our adjustments kind of baked into it. What if we want to save the image and we could come back and re-edit things? Well, then we just need to save this as an Affinity Photo file. Now, to do that, we're going to go up to File and Save. And by the way, if I tried to close this right now, it would warn me that we haven't saved it. So um, you won't have an issue, basically. So you can see right here, uh, it defaulted to the uh, same folder that the original raw file was in. And it's giving me the underscore DSC 1122.af photo. And we'll stay, stay with that. So I know that this is the edits of that raw file. And I'll click Save. And that's it. It saved it. Now if I go up and I close down Affinity Photo, Let's just, uh, let's first of all, let's just close out this file. So, because if I reopen Affinity Photo, it's going to by default open that fold file again. All right. So let's uh, quit Affinity Photo. All right. Now on our desktop, we have that original raw file. And again, this is not processed at all. You can see it's, you know, not processed. So that uh, stays intact. We have our JPEG that I would share. To, in this case, I said Instagram. And then over here, we have this AF photo um, image. And if I double click and open that, it will open up automatically in Affinity Photo. And of course, I get this splash screen there, but we'll get rid of that. So we're in Affinity Photo and we could do edits uh, from this point on if we want. So really, Affinity Photo it has so many tools. I think sometimes people get a little intimidated by it, but it's really very easy and it's pretty logical. Once you get an image opened up into it, in this case, this raw file, um, it kind of brings it to where you need to be. And then you could just start processing it. And then it brings you to the next point you need to be, which is the photo persona. And from this point, you could say export it to something that you're going to use, or you could save it as something you'll come back and work on later. So that is um, it's kind of the basic processing techniques uh, done in Affinity Photo. And if you'd like, I'll do future videos where we'll take deeper dives into Affinity Photo. We'll use some of those tools that are in the developer perso persona that I didn't even touch. And then we'll do some things over here in the photo persona uh, with layers and, and adjustment layers and such. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.